Good afternoon, everybody. Bill Brown here with JITCAD Cam. This week, we're gonna talk about five axis control for Workflow Wednesday. So this is gonna be more of a beginner intro to this for a lot of you out there. However, I think some of you are gonna get some value out of this even as advanced users. That said, you do need the machining extension. It is on sale right now and you can buy directly through myself at JITCAD Cam using the link down in the bio below. So let's jump into this. So as you guys can see, I've already got my setup already created. I'm gonna use a machine here. And just so you know, I'm using the same stock body here. The idea is the path, not so much the stock representation at this moment. So the very first thing I need to do is I need to go into any one of my 3D tool paths that have five axis control. I always treat five axis personally as three axis at first. And you guys will see why here in a minute. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and do steep and shallow. I'm gonna go ahead and tell it steep only, and let's just give it 0.1 step downs, and let's hit okay and see what we get. So in the case of this part, I'm going all the way around the outside of the part. Now, not the best scenario for a lot of you out there, and as you get more into five axis machining, you're dealing with smaller areas, you're not dealing with necessarily large areas, right? But if I was to simulate this with my machine here real quick, and I go ahead and hit play, at some point, we're gonna cause a collision if you haven't looked at my timeline. And the idea is, is we spent all that money on a five axis machine to be able to come in and actually use stubbier tools, more rigidity and get much better cleaner finishes, right? So let's do exactly that. So at the very, very beginner level, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my tool path and I'm gonna go to the multi-axis tab. We're gonna tell it five axis and then I'm gonna go ahead and tell it collision avoidance automatic. So what's gonna happen now is upon hitting okay, we're gonna go in and we're actually gonna create a full five axis simultaneous path with automatic collision avoidance. Now there may or may not be areas that you can or cannot reach. I luck out very well on this part. However, the easy way to see what's going on here because we've said vertical is we're staying vertical until we have to transition to full five. And that's why we're getting what you can see up here is kind of that lollipop kind of profile on these outer areas. So let's go ahead and simulate that. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and simulate this. We're gonna go ahead and slow it down just a little bit. But as we get down to that point where we normally have a collision, we're now starting to tilt and spin our machine. And it looks like a hurricane is happening here. But the concept is exactly that. We stayed vertical until we got to a point where we needed to tilt our actual physical machine. Now, again, based on our part profile and what we're doing here, we're not machining on the tip of our tool, which again is a big part of using a five axis is to get off the tip of the tool. So for those of you that don't know, if you look at the tip of a ball end mill is in most cases, if you're using a three flute, for example, there's usually only one flute to center. If you're using a four flute, there's usually only two flutes to center. If you ever machine on the very tip 15 degrees, you're actually gonna have to machine slower or you're gonna cause surface defect. So. Again, this looks amazing in the event that we were, you know, not concerned about the tip of the tool, or in this case, I don't have the flat areas turned on, the shallow areas, but if I was, I would want to choose a little different strategy, right? Currently, we're letting Fusion do whatever it wants to do. So let's go back to multi-axis. Now, I would like to force this tool path to stay at a certain angle. So the first thing I'm gonna do before this is I do wanna to express to you guys the importance here. Treat five axis like three axis, please. Because all we're really doing with five axis right now is changing how we are going to achieve said blue lines, right? So we made our blue lines. Our vertical step downs are coming from our tool orientation, or in this case, my Z in my setup. This is very, very important for a lot of you, right? We're not coming from anything crazy, you know, like. Get the blue lines on your part the way you want them in like a three axis mentality and your life will be much easier, right? But let's go back now. I would like to lean or lead my tool. And for the sake of this part, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off collision avoidance. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set a lean. And for those of you that don't know, no, this is a cool tip, is if you put your mouse on something, it'll tell you what it does in Fusion. But leading means tilting forward and back. Lean means left and right. Well, if I wanted to go in and I wanna tilt my tool by 20 degrees, I'm gonna go ahead and type 20. Now, the thing is, is this is perpendicular from the surface you are machining, right? So 
normally it's always at that tip of the tool or 90 degrees kind of to the surface, right? Now, by doing a lean of 20 degrees, if I simulate this again, you're going to notice that we are now no longer on the tip of our tool, right? I am now tilted to a location of 20 degrees on the radius of that actual tip of the tool. The problem is now is as we start to go around this profile, and again, let's get a little further down here, I'm starting to get tilted out into the negatives and I'm starting to cause collisions. I shouldn't say negatives, that's probably not the best way to say it, but as you're seeing is I'm getting what I like to call past 90. And when you get past 90, things get ugly. So let's go back and make a quick adjustment. So if we change that from a 20 degrees positive to a negative 20 degrees, what you're gonna notice is it's now going to tilt it the opposite direction, right? So whether you're positive or your negative tilt will affect which way it tilts this tool. So again, as, as you're seeing, my starting position is much more vertical now. But if we go ahead and simulate this and let this run, again, we're still gonna get collisions. It's a part of the game, right? And again, you would never machine this entire profile as such, but you guys are now starting to see that our tool is 20 degrees tilted. And in this case, it's negative tilted from the surface that we are machining. So that's a really good representation of that. So again, lead and lean, that's basically what you're doing is you're telling the software to align itself to the surface, right? How do I want to be tilted or leaned away from or lean forward, lean back? from that actual surface. Now, let's dive into a little different strategy here. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch out to from point. Now, this is where I'm gonna make some pretty detrimental changes. We're gonna actually say I want a silhouette of something and I am gonna work with, not a silhouette, I apologize. We're gonna say selection. And I wanna concentrate on a specific area. This is a much more real world five axis scenario. So. What I want to do is I want to say, I want to come from a specific point. So I'm going to go ahead and pick this point right here and I'm going to hit OK. And now what you're going to see is when we simulate this specific tool path, my tool is always coming from direct center of that point, right? So again, we don't have any collision avoidance on, so we haven't told the software to pay attention and not slam into anything. But as you're seeing, we are now at a physical tilted angle. And what's actually happening here is, I don't know how well this machine sim is set up, but we got so lucky with that point that I don't think we actually have any collisions. So as we go further down that face, you're going to notice the actual head of my machine tilts up more. The tip of my tool comes down because we are always maintaining center line of that point, right? So again, this is super handy if you just wanted to drop a point in like a little female area as you're seeing here and being able to still achieve machining. The problem with it is though, is as you're starting to see out here, my point is not far enough back in this kind of direction here to be able to come all the way around this surface to machine it. And that's something we've lost out on. Again, the location of that line that we're gonna use here in a moment isn't gonna fix that either. That was all in the guy that drew those lines, which is yours truly. But let's go back now and let's change things up. So as you saw, we're staying between, again, this is why I can't stress this enough. In a three axis mindset, we made our blue lines for our tool path. We are only telling the software now, maintain the shortest distance between this point and this line that we have drawn. Well, now we can change it up. So instead of a point, let's go in and let's say I want to maintain from a curve. So again, as if I select this curve, what you're gonna notice now is we are gonna get a completely different scenario when it comes to machining. And that scenario is gonna be, is now between holding the tool center on this line at the closest point between the line and my actual tool path edge, right? So what you'll actually notice here is this tool will travel up and down that line vertically based on how it was sketched. And again, this is a little tricky to see, but as you're gonna notice is it always maintains that. However, we are now allowing it to go up and down that edge. So let's sophisticate this a little bit. Again, I do have collisions, guys. We're gonna come back to these collisions eventually and fix them, don't worry. But now let's throw some tool orientation at this, right? So in this case, we're gonna go ahead and say if my tool orientation was actually this face and we recalculate this tool path, this will show you guys that that tool orientation now 
gives us a much better view of what's happening across that line, right? So now as we're seeing is as we come in to cut that profile, we're basically almost like a fixed four axis situation. And we are always maintaining, keeping that tool shooting through that line. But now this is again, this is some important information for a lot of you is as you get down to the bottom, remember it's always the shortest distance, right? So as you can see, based on this edge here and this point, we are gonna start to tilt that tool further and further more vertical. So let's speed this up a little bit. Let's go ahead and see if we can't jump forward in our tool path. I might just have to click and drag this through. But as you're seeing again, guys, is we are now at the lowest point possible on the actual curve to come from, going to the furthest point over here with the shortest distance. And that's why you see we stay at this point as we tilt until we start to travel along that face. Again, my graphics card's jumping around a little bit here. But as we machine up, we never actually achieve going to the top of this edge, right? We're always at that shortest point in location. So with that, even with that tool orientation turned on, it has helped us a ton. So now what we can do is we can actually change things up even more. So this is kind of a neat trick here. So if I go back to the mentality of from point, and again, as if we were gonna do everything from that point, actually I'm backwards here, guys. Let me go ahead and change something. We're gonna keep it from curve. And the reason why we're gonna keep it from curve is we want that tool to slide up and down that line that we drew, right? Now, I'm gonna turn on collision avoidance. And what I'm gonna say is I wanna use a specific point for collision avoidance, right? So what's gonna happen now is when I add that point in for collision avoidance, we are gonna either trim our toolpath or we are gonna fix the location that we're coming from in certain scenarios to avoid collisions. So what I'm actually gonna do also is let's go ahead and kick off tool orientation one last time. And the idea is, is when we're now looking at this from a little different view, you're gonna notice some areas may or may not be missing based on what we're doing. So again, is now with that collision avoidance in, we're able to actually keep that tool at certain scenarios locked to that point. So as you're seeing again, as we're coming in, as we're coming down, anywhere we are starting to cause a collision based on the closest point between that line and my tool path edge, right guys? What's gonna happen is we're actually going to override and tell it, no, keep it closer to this point to avoid a collision, right? So again, it's super neat to say that you can actually come in and achieve really good results with this by using that from point or from curve kind of collision avoidance. So as you can see, we can do a lot with this toolpath. And the last thing I'm gonna to touch on about this whole idea of getting into five axis is your tool axis limits. Now this is big to me. So if you're new to five axis, the number one rule I tell everybody the no-no zone is everything past 90. Now, this tool access limit has multiple ways to be controlled, right? So one is we are gonna set a minimum and a maximum tilt. Now from that, what we do need to do is we need to say what is the access reference, right? So a lot of people confuse this. So from setup Z, we are allowing the tool to tilt between zero and 90. Now, if it can't go past 90, we can either trim or machine at tilt. Now, if I go ahead and say maximum tilt is 90, trim it so that we never go past 90, what's gonna happen is one, my collision avoidance I think is gonna kick in and we're not really gonna get much trimming, but it will automatically trim that tool path or machine it at maximum tilt. So if we go back in this path, and let me show you guys this a little bit better, we're gonna go ahead and tell this that we're gonna lean the tool and I'm gonna go back to 20 degrees, and what's gonna happen with that leaning of the tool path is it's going to tilt downwards normally, but it can't because that's past 90 degrees, right? So again, as if we simulate this, and you'll see this in real time, is we will eventually start to tilt more and more, and we'll get to a point where we're at that 90 degree threshold, and we're about there right there, right? So it's never allowing past 90. Now, if I go in, and I make the adjustment of, you know, machine at the maximum tilt. Again, this is a safety thing more than anything for you guys out there. This is now going to machine that cavity as much as it can, 
but it's only going to do it at a maximum tilt of 90 degrees. So again, as if I speed this up a little bit, we're going to get tilted to a point where we are at a full-blown 90, and we just kind of stay locked at 90 degrees. Again, super handy depending on what you're doing or what you're trying to achieve. There is some also tricks here if you're trying to kind of 